So my name is Florian, I'm the executive director of the Document Foundation and I'm based in beautiful Igo area south of Munich near the Austrian border but we meet here in Brussels at the Hackfest so as you can see I'm, I'm quite proud to be active in an international project and an international community. What users of course see in first place is you can download the software for free, there's no, no price attached, you can use it, that's what they see, but there's a lot more beyond that and behind that. Um, open source and, and free software is about the, the, the culture, how the software is developed, how people work together. So we have an, uh, a free software license, that means um, the source code is available and you not only can work on it, but you're actu actually encouraged to hack on it and work on it. And as you see, meeting here at the hack First, we try to um, share the knowledge, to mentor people, to actually get them into working on LibreOffice, on the code and on a couple of other areas like infrastructure, like marketing, quality assurance, localization. And then we work worldwide, we are quite open-minded, there is basically no, no barrier um, in, in languages or cultures, time zones and this is the, the open source spirit, the open source model, that people work together on one project uh, jointly across the world and, and see each other every once in a while in person but yeah that's um, that there's much more to it than just the software enterprise it's it's the full culture and, and the ideals that that free software open source stands for so we were looking for a home a, a legal entity for the project and checked a couple of options. If you look in the US for example there are slots of foundations for free software, Mozilla, Wikipedia for, for the, the uh, open knowledge and there is um, lots more and after some um, investigation we ended up with a German foundation, uh, Stiftung, um, as an uh, entity and the main reason is because what you put in the statutes is quite fixed. So you can do a couple of changes to the statutes, but the main premises, the main um, objective of TDF cannot be changed. So that gives security for everybody who uses it, for everybody who contributes. And it was the main idea uh, behind that to have a stable entity where you have guarantees, uh, where statutes can be enforced, but there are clear rules on openness, on transparency, and that's why in the end we went with the Document Foundation as a um, non-profit in Germany. So we have like many organizations, associations, and companies have a board of directors. At the moment it's 10 seat holders, seven full seat holders and three deputies who jump in whenever a seat holder is not available and this board already reflects the diversity of the project. We have um, board members who earn the money with LibreOffice by being developers, working for corporations, uh, active in their business. We also have pure hobbyists, um, we have members from all sorts of countries all over the world speaking various languages so that really reflects the diversity that we have. And then one strong element of the Document Foundation is that you can become a member or more formally put as we have in the statutes a member of the Board of Trustees. The idea behind that is when you contribute to LibreOffice or any of the Foundation's projects by whatever means except money. So by, by actively contributing, by carrying out some work, be it development, localization, marketing, infrastructure and the like, and you've been doing that for three months and you have the intent to do that for at least the next six months, then you can ask to be a member of the Document Foundation. And a member can be elected into the board and it can elect the board. The idea is that those who contribute can steer the ship. And if you now have only the board of directors and the board of trustees, it would be easy for a board to simply determine who is a member, so who can be elected. And to avoid that, we have a second, uh, actually a, a third body inside TDF, which is the membership committee. The membership committee is there to evaluate applications and the, the barrier to become a member is actually rather low. They are checking whether you made a contribution, whether you fulfill the requirements, but the rules are not overly strict. So basically everybody can, when they contribute, become a member. And there is some system of checks and balances with the board of directors overseeing the election of the membership committee and the other way around.
So the Document Foundation relies on donations that we receive from our donors from all around the world. Last year we had 80,000 individual donations and apart from the fact that there is funding available, uh, this is especially um, great to see that we have such strong support worldwide. 80,000 individual donations from all over the world. We do not rely on a single sponsor but rather really build on a strong foundation literally with donations coming in from all over the world. Um, that is fantastic to see. And the spending is basically distributed in three parts. We have a set of recurring costs with a gr growing team that works on a paid basis for the Document Foundation. Um, recurring costs for infrastructure which makes a large chunk given we are a virtual project online working on the internet having lots of machines and servers uh, connected and then we have buckets uh, like a community bucket that's basically a pool that we build for funding and, and fostering um, community driven events like hackfests mentoring events we have the same for marketing related um, expenses like trade shows, like producing collaterals, and then we have so-called special projects. Those are mostly tenders that we run. Last year we had a set of tenders to improve the LibreOffice code, to deliver new features, to fund specific functionality, and that's the breakdown of the budget, so recurring costs, special projects, and those buckets. So it's of course loads of administrative tasks like accounting, um, banking, budgeting process. I'm, I'm glad to work with a, with a growing and, and very good team that I can guide and, and uh, coordinate projects, set priorities, work with them, um, enable them to do projects. And should I have some spare time, my uh, contributions are also in the area of marketing and infrastructure to the degree that that's possible for me. So for TDF as an entity, we had, of course, by growing and setting up processes, quite some costs in terms of, of actual spendings and also time to have processes in place, to establish a budgeting process um, and get all of that in place. I would consider that being in a stable state now with um, comparable parameters each year. So there is more time for individual projects. In the office sector per se, I think the next steps and challenges will be of course the, the mobile market and the online market because those come on top of the, the desktop version that we do have already in place so that will be one of the challenges and of course it's always a challenge to retain and to get contributors in the project to mentor them to encourage them to enable them that will be an ongoing challenge and tasks uh, and a priority on our agenda actually.